Amtrak AEM-7 number 906 has been cut up, but its horns survive. The horn in this photo, on the F end, is heard in this recording shortly after being removed from the locomotive. If you know your horns, you will have noticed this is not a K5LA. It's a Canadian-tuned K5L, which is very rare for an Amtrak locomotive. This video will take a look at the restoration process for an unpainted die-cast horn to end up with a result like this. What's interesting about the 906's horns is that both are K5Ls manufactured in late April of 2000, and there are two serial numbers apart. Both horns likely ended up going onto the locomotive about five years later when it was overhauled and went into the Phase 5 scheme. Now is a good time to talk about the safety equipment that I use when I do a horn restoration. It's a topic that's not often discussed, but important. Safety glasses are a good habit to get into, and hearing protection goes without saying. Even if you think you're going to be cracking a horn valve open just a little bit for a soft blast, it might slip and you could end up damaging your hearing really easy. The gloves on the right are great for handling chemicals, and the ones on the left are better for general purpose. A respirator is a great investment, even when painting outside in a well-ventilated area, it makes a big difference. None of this safety equipment is very expensive, and it will help ensure that you can enjoy the hobby for a long time. After having been in service for about 12 years, in all sorts of weather conditions, it's not surprising to see the amount of surface corrosion and grime that these horns developed on the outside. I took the horns all apart, which wasn't that difficult thanks to it having stainless steel bolts on the back caps and manifold, and I was surprised to see at how good of condition the diaphragms were in. They were essentially brand new. I wasn't expecting the amount of corrosion on the insides of the power chambers, which had already developed a fair amount of pitting. This is exactly why I wanted to take the horn all apart, because this type of corrosion isn't going to get any better without anyone doing anything about it. In order to preserve the die cast finish, I couldn't use a media blaster to take care of all the corrosion. So I used Prepanetch in a 50-50 water and solution mixture applied with a spray bottle. It required a fair amount of scrubbing, but it got all that grime off and it did a fair job of getting all the corrosion. I ended up doing a second treatment in order to make sure I got all of the corrosion. Here's a sequence of photos showing as is, after one bath, and after the second bath. After the first prep and etch bath, there were still some signs of corrosion in the heads of some of the bells. You'll see the little white spots there in these photos. After the prep and etch treatment, it's important to wash the horn with hot soapy water to make sure all the solution is gone. Otherwise, there's the risk of it continuing the chemical reaction and, and eating away at more metal. Once the horns dried, I used the finest grade of steel wool, which is 0000. It's tedious, but it actually helps get the finish of the horn back to its original state. I wanted something a little bit more shiny than what they were looking like after the original prep and etch baths, and it restores that die cast finish really nicely. The diaphragms did have some gunk on them, and I used the fine steel wool, which got most of it off without a problem. There's only a few marks from any staining that was left on there. Once I got all the parts to a finish that I was happy with, I then used Eastwood's Clear Diamond Finish Gloss Coat. This stuff is awesome for horns. It's formulated for aluminum rims and it works great on aluminum horns. I decided to go with the clear coat because if you leave it natural, eventually due to moisture that's in the air or even if it's left out with a little bit of water that gets on it and not cleaned up, it will start to show some marks. Before I did that though, I wiped the entire horn down with acetone and a rag to clean it out. I used old o-rings for the feet as I didn't want the clear coat to go inside of there so I kept those in there to mask it off. 
Some people will tell you that you have to mask off every machine surface and they would normally tape off the entire base of uh, what I call the foot of the horn. This is not necessary on this type of horn since it does not have direct contact. The only area that's going to actually have contact is where the rubber o-ring is and water does get up underneath in there between the manifold and the horn so I wanted to keep that from getting corroded. I also uh, paint the inside of the power chamber. As you can see, this is where most of the pitting occurred, and I don't want that to happen again. Everything in here will end up getting clear coat on it. However, I will go back and wipe off the clear coat that gets on the inner seat that the diaphragm will touch. I also recommend using latex gloves or some other sort of glove to keep fingerprints and oils from getting on the horn parts before painting as this can mess up the adherence of the paint. To paint the manifold I used an old coat hanger that I cut in half at the bottom and then bent little hooks into each side so I could hang it as you see here. This way I'm able to paint one coat on all the sides without having to handle the part. I taped off all of the machine surfaces that I did not want to have uh, the clear coat to get onto including the builder's tag or the serial tag. As you can see this part in particular has uh, quite a bit of material still on it and from what I gather this is some sort of uh, anti-skid spray that was on or near the roof of the locomotive that oversprayed onto the horn and even with uh, light scrubbing and all of the chemical washes that I did that was still on there so I figured if it's going to stay on that hard, that's great. I'm not going to bother to get it off. I'm fine with it having a little bit of an in-service look. When reassembling the horn, I put anti-seize on all of the threaded connections. I put deox on all of the mated surfaces to prevent corrosion from occurring. And on all the rubber parts, I use lithium grease. As you can see, I stamped the bottom of most of my horns with what locomotive they came off of. And uh, I, I was really happy with how this entire horn came out. It looks almost showroom quality, you know, brand new finish on the entire thing. I replaced uh, the pipe plugs with stainless steel parts. And I was able to reuse the original airline. All I did was clean up the brass parts so they actually look brass instead of black and washed off the rubber air hose with some Dawn kitchen soap and the whole thing looked really good. I do add a thin flat washer underneath the split lock washers that go on from the bell foot into the manifold as those split lock washers will chew up the the foot of the bell. In comparing this horn with the R-End K5L, its sister, you can really see the difference of how it cleaned up and what it looks like from the as-is in-service look versus the freshly overhauled look. I hope you enjoyed having some insight as to the rebuild process and what I did to bring this horn back to its original state. And as you can hear from the recording, the sound is almost identical to how it was when it came off the locomotive by keeping track of what came from where and being fortunate to have parts that didn't have excessive wear on them. Thanks for watching.